I spent my entire, entire career working with computers. So um, when I retired 10 years ago, I felt a responsibility to, to keep the old ones going and keep them alive. Computers got to be kept running. It's like a steam engine. It's got to be in steam and smoke and fire and uh, computers got to be running its software and its operating system to, to really be appreciated. Pre-1980, the computers were huge devices that could be the size of a lounge room. The breakthrough came around 1980 when integrated circuits were developed, when uh, all of a sudden you went from uh, thousands of transistors to one tiny chip the size of your fingernail. This is a little timeline of technology over the years, starting from the 1930s with relays, with valves. Australia's first computer was made out of 2,000 of those. About 1950, transistors came in, the first silicon. Then about 1970, integrated circuits. And over 30 years or so, we're up to 10 million transistors on the one chip. I spent my career with Digital Equipment Corporation, known as DEC, and they were the inventor of the mini computer. This is my second favourite computer. It's a PDP-8 made by DEC in about 1965, and it had 8K bytes of memory. That's one millionth of the modern memory stick that you buy for $30 in your local store. The uh, producers of the Dish movie called up and asked me could I provide a PDB-9 and because they were doing the Dish as a movie and I said sure I can, I can provide the actual one that came out of Parks. One of the pieces I enjoy most is this uh, totalizator. This is about 1920s technology, an astonishing piece of technology. Built beautifully, still lasting after 70 or 80 years. Well, they sold 200 systems around the world to race courses in the 1920s and 1930s. And that was a company led by Sir George Julius, who later founded CSRO. This is the famous Australian-made microbe. It was made in Hornsby, Sydney, actually. And they sold them to every Australian primary school. It was a tremendous success in about 1979 and introduced a whole generation of Australian school children to their first uh, touch of computing. This is a little terminal that our engineers used to use to test computers and it's notable for having three buttons on it. One is yes, two is no and three is don't know. What the computer did to a don't know signal has not uh, ever been revealed. I've been collecting computers since about 1971. I created a program known as Max's Creative Trade-Ins and told the customer if you give me back your old computer you can have 10% off the new one and the company tolerated my eccentricity. We built up quite a nice uh, museum of old computers. I uh, offered the, com the company a dollar for the whole museum collection and they sold it to me. So uh, I became the proud owner of uh, either one of the world's best collections of old computers or 100 tonnes of scrap metal, time will tell. <laughs>